Oh, I'm sorry, folks. I tell you, it, it really... You've heard of the Never never Trumpers? They're kind of like this. You, you can't talk to them. It's the same thing with the Never... What are we going to call it? The Never Enders? The Never... The Never... Stufers? The Never... What are we going to... Who? What's going to happen to all these people that can't admit the chase is over is what I'm trying to say. What's going to happen to them? I don't know. They just can't... I guess they're just going to spend the rest of their life looking for a treasure that's already been retrieved. Okay. Next, Eric is off again talking about how Finn and Jack approached the head ranger. I thought we just already covered that. So I guess we're going to cover it for more to talk about. We're just going to keep going. There is no evidence of that. Stop saying that. Stop it. Well, what there is supposed evidence of is that they had a meeting with the head ranger. And since I know for a fact that head rangers... Do not just fantasize a treasure may be in their park without any evidence and then start uh, calling out people who are involved with said treasure and making them, uh, you know, prove that they did or didn't put it in their park even though they have no evidence. Since I know that's not the way the federal bureaucratic system works because there are all these fact checks on what people have the legal right to do, you know, head rangers can't just cart hey, you know, maybe this was, maybe someone left this here. I heard they're having another treasure. You know, they have all these treasure hunts all over the place right now, right? Um, so, I mean, I mean hey, you'd be a head ranger and you'd say, hey, you know what? Uh, someone here says they planted a uh, treasure, $10,000 uh, treasure in 10 different states. Uh, what if they planted it in Yellowstone? I think I'm going to call them and demand they show me where those treasures are located because I think they're in Yellowstone. Think they can do that? No. Next, Eric is talking about his solve. I'm so glad she said that. Because, of course, it's not my solve. It's Jack Stoof's solve. Jack found the treasure. Eric Johnson did not find the treasure. The closest Eric Johnson came to Nine Mile Hole was very, very close. It was Fen Rock. They call it Fen Rock. I called it the blaze. I thought maybe it was the blaze. I was wrong. People wrote me afterwards. A couple of them were very sure of themselves. I even said, I wondered if it was an alien, you know, it was Jack and Alias or his other people. I don't know who they were, but they were just like, Eric, man, it was right down the river. Just had to go over the river. It was over there. You would have, it was there. And, you know, then, then I got this one guy. Maybe it was the same guy. I, don't need, I didn't even look into any of that crap because people can just make up emails and set up accounts and all that. I don't, you know, I got better things in trying to figure out who's behind them. You know, even some people were saying, oh, nah, nah, nah. they were going, what? They were going, nah, 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 nah. You know, you missed, okay, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not even sure at this point after what I think's going on that I want to have that treasure. But, no, nah, that's probably a stupid thing to say. How could you not want the treasure? Well, I guess we'll see how it goes if it's still in litigation. I just don't know. That's why I'd love to know what's going to go on. I would love to know how this all ends up at the end legally with Jack and all of it. You know, I'd love to know. She says about my solve, his solve, talking about me. It's mostly the same as the nook are solve, but worse. It's impressive how Eric was able to make a worse solve than the nookers. I did not follow the nook solve. I know that it was in the Nine Mile area. I know that it was about, it was hidden in a nook. I did not follow whoever they were that were involved with that. Was it Cynthia again and all them? I don't know. I didn't follow any of that. So apparently it was the same general area. Well, it's not my whole area. Okay. It was bad when the nookers came up with it, and it's still bad. I have a video somewhere where I improved the nooker solve. Look it up. No. I'm not going to look it up because you obviously are totally a logical person and, and don't and misunderstood half of what I said in my video. Eric, home of Brown as Fenrock. Why? How in what alternate reality does that make sense? Eric doesn't explain why Fenrock is the home of Brown, but he's sure of it. Well, okay. As I said in my video, although I did not find his name or her name, I believe it was a guy, someone 
had written me. I thought it was in the comments, but I couldn't find it. Maybe it was an email. But anyway, they had written me and said, Fenrock is home of Brown. And they said that's why you have the picture of Fen's father, Marvin, holding a string of brown trout up as he leans back against Fen Rock. Home of Brown. Look, here, I'm standing in front of Fen Rock, and I've got a stringer of trout. Brown trout, I assume. Trout. Okay? Home of Brown. Brown trout. Which I had already made that dis I had already made that connection for this person ever because I was the one who made the picture. Mike Cowling put it in one of his videos, which was fine. I didn't care that he used my picture. But you know that picture where it shows the rock, the a, a, a modern photo of the rock, right next to the river Madison. Okay, that's my photo I took, and then I superimposed the Marvin Fenn picture from the book onto that, off to the side. That's my picture. That's the whole point. At the time, I thought it was the blaze. That's why I made a deal out of it when I visited there. But now that this guy said, no, Eric, you misunderstood. It wasn't the blaze. That's Homer Brown. That's why he's holding the fish. Makes perfect sense. And what makes even more sense is what I tried to explain in my video. And I made it very clear in the video. Look at that rock. That rock, I didn't say it succinctly, and I should have said it. That rock looks like a little fish house. Literally, literally. What I said in my last video was, I think fish would be underneath that rock because it has an overhang. It's like a mushroom. Underneath where the water eroded it, it's like a stem, a, a, a stone stem. And then it goes up and it has a mushroom top, which is above the water. And I said how, you know, I used to fish, and I liked to fish for largemouth bass, and they would often be in the, they like to be in the shadows. And a lot of fish like to be in the shadows, right? And they wait, and they see bugs and stuff, and then they go out and get them. And, of course, they keep in a nice, dark place. Kind of. And I even said in my video, I, I, I'll bet at any given time, there's, there's probably at least, you know, a trout. One trout under that rock. There could have been lots of trout under that rock. It could have been literally the home of Brown, where you look at this thing, and when you come up to it, and you see fish under there. That's what I'm trying to say in that last video. It's like literally the home of Brown. Eric doesn't explain why Fen Rock is home Brown. Well, I thought I kind of did, but I had I, sh I should have made the extra effort to really, really explain it. Eric does not explain the next line in the poem. The end is ever drawing nigh. Eric then points to a dozen splotches on the map. These are just areas on the maps with no trees, but Eric says they could all be dry creeks. No, actually, what I did on there was, if you followed the cursor, I was following indentations in the Google Earth map of Nine Mile Hole and Fenrock area. I was following what I saw were indentations, okay? And especially right across from Fen Rock, you can see some very, what, I mean, they have to be dry creeks. And of course, there's no paddle up your creek. So, see, when I make these videos, I am talking to the Forest Fen community, so I'm not filling in stuff. Now, she does say, well, maybe the dry creeks. Yeah, I, but not splotches. I wasn't just pointing out splotches. That's very misleading and not very honest. I was pointing out what I thought looked like indentations in the earth, which could have been dried up creeks. Eric also points to a wet creek and calls that a dry creek. You know, I don't know because I never saw this wet creek. If you look at the map, if you look at Map Carta, for instance, it does show a wet creek with a bunch of, well, it only shows this one wet creek. So if in fact that wet creek is still wet, uh, and I called it a dry creek, or at least I pointed to it as one of the splotches, then you got me. Yeah, okay, I pointed to a wet creek as a dry creek. Who gives a shit? My point was, since I made a point of saying I don't know where the Fen treasure was found, since I made a point of saying I don't know where the blaze was, the whole point of what I was saying was somewhere across the river from Fenrock 
all the way up past maybe the other side of Nine Mile Hole, across the river is where I believe it is. I went out of my way to say, I don't know where it is. That's why I'm just saying, look at all these lines that could be dry creeks. Ooh, one of them was a wet creek. Okay, sorry. But, you know, that's, my, that's the point. That was the point. I was just trying to say any of these, and that's why Jack had to go in there 25 times to look, because he had a lot of area to find it. He doesn't, suppose, he doesn't say what you're supposed to do with all these dry creeks. God help us. Are you serious? One of the dry creeks is the right creek that Jack found. What are you supposed to do with all of these dry creeks? You're supposed to figure out which dry creek is the correct creek and go up that and find the treasure, which I never did, but Jack did. That's what you're supposed to do with all the dry creeks. You're supposed to go figure out which one is the right one and find the treasure. Holy God, people, I don't know. I, I'm just like, all right, which dry creek should you not paddle up? Eric doesn't say, I guess, just pick one at random. I don't know. That was Jack's job. I didn't pull it off. Otherwise, I'd have the uh, treasure. Yeah, so you're right. I didn't say, and I don't know, and I didn't figure it out. Eric says that heavy loads are the boulders in the Madison River. Eric doesn't explain what are high. Just heavy loads and water high. Just heavy loads and water high. Eric says that heavy loads are the boulders in the Madison River. Eric doesn't explain what are high. So after going into the woods up the dry creek, you need to come back down to see the heavy loads in the Madison River. Where is my poem? Just a second. It's hard to get the map, I mean, get the uh, poem. Okay, so let's go to the exact uh, verbiage. From there, it's no place for the meek. Okay, begin at where warm waters halt. That was fire hole. Take it in the canyon down. That's uh, Madison River Valley. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in, home, put in below the home of Brown. That's Fen Rock. From there, it's no place for the meek. Okay, because you're going across the river. The end is ever drawing nigh. You're getting close. Uh, there'll be no paddle up your creek. You're not going to be going up a creek in a paddling boat. Just heavy loads and water high. Yeah, he's telling you, okay, you're going to be, okay, it's no place for the meek. You're going to go across the river. The end is drawing nigh. You're getting close to the end. There'll be no paddle up your creek. So you aren't, you aren't worrying about going up a creek. Just heavy loads and water high. He's saying go across the river. Heavy loads, these rocks that I think are probably a good place to go across. And water high would, you know, it's saying you're going to be in water, right? I don't, I didn't find, I thought that was kind of very clear that he's telling you to go across the river, not up a creek. Now, maybe the whole concept of there will be no paddle up your creek has nothing to do with dry creeks. He's just saying, ain't a creek you're going to go up, you're going across the river. Uh, mm -hmm. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. It's like you're staying, if you're standing there as I was next to the Madison, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, I mean, how high the water would be, but for a lot of people, I think Cynthia Meacham said she was able to get through the river, and she's, uh, she said, fairly short person. So, I mean, for her, it wasn't a big deal, but she got through. I, I don't know. I don't know why that's a, I don't know why that's a big deal, but anyway. Eric says, Eric doesn't explain what are high, so after going into the woods up the dry creek, you need to, no, he's saying you're not going to go into a dry creek. That's exactly what he's saying. You're not going to go up the dry creek. You need to come back down to see the heavy loads. And it's fair to say what she just said, and I'll be honest about that because I was pointing out the dry creek. So that is a little misleading. I kind of see that. But again, I'm just going back to the fact that I don't know what you do when you get to the other side of the river. So that, to me, is all speculation. Um, 
Maybe it's a double entendre. Maybe he's, you know, maybe he's saying you got to go across the river, and if you go up a creek, it's going to be dry. It's not going to be, you're not going to have it need a paddle. I mean, I don't know, because this again, like she says here, he says, she says, that logic was just as bad when the nookers used it. Back to the nookers. Uh, what? Here's another thing. What does it matter what the nookers did? What, is, what does Jack Saul have to do with the nookers? If Jack said he was looking in Nine Mile Hole, and he found it, and I'll, I believe he found it in Nine Mile Hole, because he told Finn that in numerous emails he was looking for it there, does it matter that someone else came up with a solve in the same area? if they didn't find it? Did it ever matter that people had been within 500 feet of the treasure and missed it? Or had been within 200 feet and missed it? Did it matter that those people were that close? Because they obviously were near it. They never found it. So what does it matter? I don't know. She keeps She's hung up on the whole nooker. I guess she didn't like the nooker thing. I haven't watched her videos about the nookers. And again, I'm only saying she because she uses the Shrek thing. Thank you, Tober. She uses the Shrek thing, which is a female enemy. And then, you know, she uses a robot voice that is female. It sounds female. Oh, and this is where it gets kind of weird. Eric says that the blaze is somewhere in a 100-acre section of the woods across the Madison River. Right. That's what I was, I don't know about 100 acre. But yeah, that's what I said. I'll stick by it. I said that it was uh, across the... Tell her, don't, don't headbutt the, the tripod. Okay, buddy? You think you can do that for me? Tell her, you think you can do that for me? You're a trip. I love you to death, but you're just trouble, aren't you? You and Belle both are trouble. Why don't you go in next door to the other room, and she's in there in the window, on the windowsill. I have these big, deep windowsills that are really nice for cats because they love to get up. And if I had a dog, the dog would love to get up there too. And they get up in those windowsills, and they just, oh, they just plant their face in the window and watch every, the birds. Okay, so I'm sorry. So yeah, Eric says the blaze is somewhere in a 100-acre section of the woods across the Madison River. This is where I get totally thrown. I don't know what this means. I'm not a big Winnie the Pooh fan. I remember when I was a kid, and I thought it was kind of cool. But uh, and then it, like, all I knew later was that Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones bought, uh, bought the place where uh, the guy who wrote Winnie the Pooh lived. And then he died there in the pool. I guess he was killed by a landscaper or some guy doing renovations. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Anyway, um, Eric says the blaze is somewhere in a 100-acre section of the woods across the Madison River. Maybe we should call this the Winnie... We should call this the Winnie the Pooh solve. I don't know what that means. And I'm probably being ignorant on that. I don't really understand Winnie the Pooh. I don't... Is that because he's... Wasn't Winnie the Pooh, what, he was also looking for honey or something, or somebody was. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Eric doesn't know what the blaze is, but it's in the 100-acre woods. Right. I almost get a sense of derision. Eric doesn't know where the blaze is, but he says it's in the 100-acre woods. Right. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the blaze was somewhere in the nine-mile hole area, and I don't know where it was, because I didn't find it. Jack did. Is that, I don't know. Is that a bad thing? Did I admit that? That I don't know where the solve is? And you can take that to the bank, and that's it. That's Eric. Solve. It's so obvious, says Eric. What's so obvious about it? You were standing right there at Fen Rock a few years ago, and you didn't think it was obvious. Then what's changed? A few years ago, when I was at Fen Rock and thought that was the blaze, the treasure had not been found. A few years ago, when I was at Fen Rock and I thought Fen Rock was the blaze, I had another solve in my mind that it could be at Three Forks, Montana, at the end of the Jefferson River on the Willow Creek, or at, on Willow Creek near the Jefferson River, near Three Forks, Montana, a few years ago. Since then, 
the treasure has been found. Yeah. I feel like I'm having to wake you guys up every once in a while and snap you out of it. It's been found by Jack Stoop. The, the, the chase is over. <laughs> I mean, it's been found. That's what changed. Then what's changed? You didn't think Fenrock was a home of Brown. Then what changed? You are certain of it now. It's obvious now. How so? How is it obvious? Nothing you said sounds obvious in the slightest. Nothing you said would make anyone want to spend 25 days combing through the Winnie the Pooh woods. Jack Stoop did. Jack Stoop did go through the Winnie the Pooh woods. Jack Stoop told Ben in numerous emails, I'm convinced the treasure is at Nine Mile Hole, and that's where I'm searching, and I'm searching, and I'm searching. And he says it over and over and over in emails that were brought into evidence in a trial. He says it over and over and over. And at one point, Fenn even says, well, don't dig in the park if you're there. You know, don't dig. You know, Jack says, if I find it, can I dig? And I'm not going to give you the exact goddamn words, okay? I'm just saying, I'm para paraphrasing. In spite of the fact that you have to say every word just goddamn right. Otherwise, what does Wyoming mean? God, just like Clinton, what, it depends on what is is. I'm sorry, folks. I know I make these these. You, you sometimes go, what is, why is he bringing it? Because I have a long memory and I've been around a long time, okay? If you want to, uh, you know what it's called? It's called arguing semantics. Do you want to sit there and argue over what Wyoming means? You, 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 are you a little, well, Eric's, is, Eric's kind of, he's kind of been out of shape at this Wyoming stuff. Because it's so fucking stupid. They both agreed to say it was in Wyoming. And Jack Stoop told Fan over and over and over, he was looking for it in Nine Mile Hole, which is in Yellowstone Park, which is in Wyoming. It's just as obvious as a nose on my face. And you want to sit there and say, well, maybe that's not the Wyoming. I think they might have been the state of Wyoming. Jesus Christ. Again, can you guys even hold jobs that think like that? Or are you stay-at-homes and mommy and daddy or your wife have to support you because you can't do anything because your brain is so fucking addled? I mean, honest. God, folks. That's why, that's what changed. The treasure was found. And then the emails came out. And Jack Stoop said he was searching the high mile hole. And that's when, and I had people contact me and say the Fen Rock was in fact the home of Brown, not the blaze. And I looked at the rock again and I said, you know, I could see now how it could actually be a home where they are in the shadow underneath the rock. And that's what changed. Jack found the treasure in my estimation. Can't you find something to do, Tober, other than make my life difficult? He's right here in front of me. Hi, buddy. Jack found the treasure, folks. The treasure was found, and I believe it's almost 100% sure that it was found at Nine Mile Hole because Jack kept telling Fenn he was searching for it at Nine Mile Hole. And Jack found it. So if Jack found it, if Jack found it, and Jack kept saying it was at Nine Mile Hole in his estimation, and then he found it, where do you think I'm going to think it probably was? I'm probably going to think it was at Nine Mile Hole because Jack kept telling Finn in email after email that he thought it was at Nine Mile Hole. It's not complicated. The world I live in is very simple. And when I don't have information, I speculate and I wonder and I imagine and I make things up. But when I start getting evidence that points to a certain conclusion, I don't sit there and talk myself out of it and go, oh, now we actually know where the finder said he thought it was. But no, I don't actually think he meant the state of Wyoming. I don't think he, you know, it's, you know, ludicrous. <sighs> Fuck, God. Holy Job. Oh, holy Jesus. I shouldn't surprise. I probably feel worry about worse about saying things like holy Jesus. Or, no, I've shut up. I'm not going to go there with that. I don't give a shit. Okay, according uh 
So how so? How is it obvious? Nothing you said sounds obvious in the slightest. Nothing you said would make anyone want to spend 25 days combing through the Winnie the Pooh woods. I don't know why she would say that when Jack said he was in and out 25 times and thought it was a nine mile hole. Those are all statements by Jack. Jack wrote in emails it was a nine mile hole and Jack wrote that he went in and out 25 times looking for it. And she's sitting here going, I don't know why anybody would want to go in there looking uh, 25 times. Well, Jack did and he found it. Unless you think everything Jack has said is fraudulent, and that Jack doesn't exist, and that all the statements are made up. But wait, there's more. According to Eric, Jack wrote to Forrest about digging near Nine Mile Hole. According to Eric? You mean according to the emails that were brought into evidence? According to Eric? Well, yeah, according to me, there are emails, there are emails that say that. According to Eric, Jack wrote to Forrest about digging near Nine Mile Hole. Forrest wrote back and said, do not dig in a national park. And then Eric says that he can see how someone would take that as confirmation. What are you talking about? That statement by Fenn is evidence against, against Yellowstone? Really, Eric? Stay out of the catnip. Yeah, I mean, if I was writing Finn saying it was at Nine Mile Hole, and I finally said, by the way, and he wasn't writing me back, but he was getting the emails, you assume, and then and then you write and you say, you know, uh, uh, gee, if I actually find it, should I dig there? And you finally get a response from Finn saying, do not dig if you find it. Yeah, I could see how, or do not dig in a national park. Yeah, I could see. I mean, you'd want to believe but yeah, I could see how you could, if I was Jack, I would take that as confirmation. Absolutely. And you could say, well, Eric, he was just saying, don't dig in a national park. He could have been saying it was a name. I, I agree. I just said, I think he might take it as confirmation because I often put myself in other people's shoes. And I think if I was in the state of mind Jack was, which he seemed very, very adamant about thinking it was a nine mile hole. And finally he gets a response from Forrest Fenn and Forrest says, just don't be digging in a national park. It's like, my God, he actually answered me, and he said, yeah, don't dig. I don't know. It's just, I just said, maybe that's what Jack would think. I know I'm being a little tough on this person. Uh, at times, it may seem that way because I get a little excited. But I actually found her video or his video to be very funny. And I told him that. I said it was hilarious. But now when I sit and I actually read it word for word what I'm being told about my 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 salt my video that I did where I put Nine Mile Hole, the solve, which I believe was where it was found by Jack, together with the poem, which I just saw. I just thought it was kind of a novel idea. I mean, we knew that Jack had said he was looking at Nine Mile Hole and we had the poem and I just thought put them together would be kind of cool to do as an experiment and see how it fits and I thought it fit pretty damn well. And of course, once I said I go across the river, I could not speculate any longer on, uh, you know, I couldn't put the clues together anymore because I don't ever get to the point of finding the blades. And Eric only talks about three of the six stanzas. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the first one is, let's see, what did I talk about? So let's go over it again. Okay, so the first one I thought was just a prelude. Now I saw some people, and it was obvious. I, I can always tell when people watch my videos. I don't necessarily even... They don't actually mention it. So some people will mention it, but some people won't. And I could, but it's, I can tell that they're speaking in the context of having watched what I've written, which is, I mean, what I've said in the video, which is fine. Uh, no big deal. I mean, everybody talks about each other's videos. Okay, the first one, as I said, some people argued that they said no. The first uh, stanza is very, very important because Finn once said every word is important. As I have gone alone in there and with my treasure bold, I can keep my secret where and hint of riches new and old. He's just saying he went in there and hid the treasure, and, and he's going to hint about where it is. Okay, every word's important, but that's all it was to me was a prelude. Begin at where warm waters halt, take it in the canyon down, not far but too far to walk, put in below the home of brown. Okay, covered all that. From there is no place for the meek, the end is ever drawing nigh, there'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. So yeah, she's right. I covered three stanzas. And there's a reason I only covered three stanzas. If you've been wise and found the blaze, I don't know where the blaze is. So that's where I stopped. I, I kind of said, look, I think this is how it starts out. Once you go across the river, you're on your own. Maybe I should have said that. 
You're on your own now, folks. I don't know. I'm just speculating. I thought it was kind of obvious. If you've been wise and found a blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But Terry Scant with Marble Gaze, just take the chest and go in peace. It means if you found the blaze, look down, you're going to see the treasure and just leave quickly. That is all there was to it. So why it is that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? The answer is I already know. I've done it tired. Now I'm weak. Yeah, well, he, he had originally been recovering from cancer, and then he recovered or went into remission. And so that was the context of the original quest was that he was going to have, you know, he was, in any way he put it, he was tired. He's leaving it out there. We already know the story of why he left it out there. It's just in the poem. So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold which I believe was crossing the river. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Well, I could have said, well, yeah, here it's in the wood somewhere. I thought that was clear. It's in the wood somewhere. So I give you title to the gold. So, okay. Eric says you can ignore half of them, and that's the end of Eric. Did I say you could ignore half of them? Forrest said every word in the poem was important. Eric says you can ignore half of them. Well, see, that's not really true. What she said at first was, Eric only talks about three of the six stanzas. Then she says, Eric says you can ignore half of them. I don't believe in any part of that video I say to the camera, oh, by the way, I didn't discuss three stanzas because you can ignore them. I think what I said was, at this point, I don't know where it is. So I could no longer match the po I mean, I just went over them anyway. I mean, I said what I believe. Wherever the blaze was, yeah, you find it, you look down, and Terry Scant, get, don't stick around and take the chest and go. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to see? Because I'm sick. Because I don't feel good. Because I'm old. Because it's over. He explained he decided to leave the treasure out there. So hear me on, listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. I think that was the cold river. If you were brave and in the wood, I'd give you title of gold. If you were brave and in the wood, wherever it was across the river that I couldn't figure out where it was, he gives you title to the gold. Eric says you can ignore half of them, and that's the end of Eric. That's what Eric considers obvious. Eric, no one is unhappy that your video is about Nine Mile Hole. I was actually hoping you had something new to say. I love these people that are so condescending. And, of course, they have no anything. They have no salt, or I don't know, maybe she does have a salt. But they didn't find it, and neither did I. Jack found it. Okay? Jack found it. And I know that's what's pissing a lot of people off. Don't say Jack found it, because that means it's over. That's really what they're saying. That means it's over. And they can't stand for it to be over, because they have no life without the Forest Fen treasure chase still going on and on and on. It's just sad. And if that's offending some of you out there, I don't give a shit. It's ridiculous to keep looking for the treasure after it's been found. I'm sorry. It's just stupid, and I feel sorry for you. I'm really, I'm really going for it today, but I'm just, this thing got me, I mean, it's just, where's, what does he think Wyoming means? <laughs> well, fuck, I don't know, the state? <laughs> Jesus, God, people. It's like that, d that dumbass thing by, uh, oh, I'm not going to get into that. People are unhappy because your solve is the same train wreck that the Nookers came up with. Well, guess what? If the Nookers was in the same area, then I guess the real train wreck for you is that Jack Stoop was looking in Nine Mile Hole because that's what the emails that were used as evidence in the McCracken trial said. So that's your real beef. It's not that the Nookers were in that area or that I think it was in that area. It's because your real beef is because Forrest Fenn and Jack said it was in Wyoming, and it looks like it was probably in Yellowstone, because they contacted Yellowstone, since uh, we know the park rangers just don't go around asking people to prove that uh, something was in their park, even if they don't know if it was in their park. It's kind of out of their purview, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, Jack said he thinks it's a nine-mile hole. I guess that for you is a real bummer. Eric, you seem like a nice guy, and it's good to hear from a searcher who doesn't sound like the mutated offspring of Patrick Bateman and Danny Will. Again, this is transcribed. 
This is from an audio to text transcription, so I'm not sure they got all the words right. I'm sure, well, I know they didn't, but I don't, I don't even know, I don't know what Patrick Bateman and Danny Will means. But you took the lazy man way to say goodbye to the chase. Then would be disappointed. The lazy man way to say goodbye to the chase. Then would be disappointed. No, I think Ben would say Eric's right. It was where Stoop found it. I think Ben would say when I and Jack said it was down in Wyoming that we meant the state of Wyoming. I think Ben, although we don't know, well, let's put it, I'll turn that around. I think since Jack Stoop said repeatedly in emails to Ben that he thought it was at Nine Mile Hole, it was found at Nine Mile Hole. Okay? Not complicated. It's like you have finally been given 90% of the, of the end, except for the blaze, where the blaze is. And we have all that log nonsense that I don't know whether it's right or not. But that aside, we have, you have virtually it right up to the point of where is the blaze. But you have the area, Nine Mile Hole, Yellowstone National Park, etc., and, and some of you are just saying, no, not going to believe it. Not going to believe Jack Stoof really found it there. Not going to believe it was even found. Not going to believe the chase is over. I want to keep the chase going in my brain, and I'm going to keep looking. And there are people that are still looking. Now, the other one I was going to do was, now, this is, this is anticlimactic. Uh, but this is five... Five Leaf Blaze. So Five Leaf Blaze wrote a number of comments uh, where he, um, and I'm not going to pick on Five Leaf Blaze. He's a little bit, uh, he gets a little bit far out with some of his theories. I read them sometimes. And some of them are a little bit, I'm like, wow, it's really kind of crazy theory. But um, he thinks a lot about the whole thing. And I guess I wanted to, bring up something he said just because it goes back to this concept of the chase not being over he says again i must ponder why eric of tireless hikings of dinosaur park fame parenthesis really enjoyed are those parenthesis god i'm losing my mind what do you call those well you know really enjoyed your 10 video postings in a row back then my first videos, folks, if you ever go watch them, it was hilarious. I mean, I would do these like 12-minute videos, and, and it would be like part one, part two, part three, part four. There was a guy that lived up in, he did some videos years ago, and he stopped doing them, but he got a lot of, he did this video, he did this with various different searchers where he would kind of poke fun at them. And he did one with me, and he, he put this uh he took paper and he kind of curled it and he had it coming out. I think he was wearing a hat and he had all these curls coming out that were supposed to be in my bangs all coming out all around and he was me and he would just start to talk about he was supposed to be me, you know, so I'm doing my thing. I'm going, yeah, so when he, I was searching in this uh, area right here and up oh, part two and then when I got to the area and up oh, part three, that was the whole shtick was he just kept going one, two, three, four, and he started laughing. He said, we love you, man, we love you. But he was making fun of the fact that I have these little short parts. And that's what they're, that's what he's talking about, too, Five Leaf Blaze. Because when um, back when I was doing the Dinosaur National Monument, a super cool place, you go into the Dinosaur National Monument, you go down this long road. It's near the uh, Utah-Colorado border. It's on the Colorado side. Uh, you get down this long, kind of beat-up dirt road. You have to have a pretty, fairly good car, probably take an SUV. And then you get down this really cool campground, and there's this, you know, it's like the, the river's cut out all the rock, and you can go walk down. There's this huge rock face that you're always kind of feel kind of boxed in, like by the, oh, it's a really cool place, Dinosaur National Monument. I'll start over again, Sorry. Again, I must ponder why Eric of tireless hikings of dinosaur park fame, really enjoyed your 10 video postings on a row back then, has changed his tune to Nine Mile Hole. What are the mechanics of an intelligent enough person hitching to a sheep solve that lacks true poem synchronicity? You were 
pegged on Dinosaur National Monument as the place. Maybe do us a video that explains your transition. That's, oh, that's what had happened. I just realized that's why I picked this out because he asked me to do a video. I've just done the video, Five Leaf Blades. The, <laughs> the emails, I know I'm repeating, folks, as I go wandering across the river into the Winnie the Pooh woods. But um, the emails that Jack Stoop sent to Fenn that were brought up in the McCracken trial, they were entered as evidence that the Fenn lawyer Summer had was able to look at before they were entered into evidence, okay? Those emails that were supposedly from Jack Stoop, which I believe they were because they made it into evidence, evidence that is looked at by both sides, uh, McCracken and uh, Summers, I think it's his name, the lawyer for the uh, Fenn estate, and of course the judge, they're all entered into evidence and at that point, see, that was a big deal. That's where all these people like Mike and Capro and Cynthia and I, I don't know, but it was all of them. They were all talking about, oh, did you notice, you know, we, we see that, is it Nine Mile Hole? Because it's in the emails. That's it. All these emails, he, he was like, wow, well, we now know it was in Nine Mile Hole. All the fairly logical people are all saying, it's in Nine Mile Hole. And, you know, well, your, your big mistake was first thing you assume is, it was in Wyoming. You don't know that they're talking about the state of Wyoming. Nine Mile Hole. Maybe he didn't mean nine. Maybe he was talking about a golf course. He said he was talking about a golf course. Nine Mile Hole. There's not, you know, there's probably golf courses called Nine Mile. Yeah, you got nine holes. You got 18 holes with Nine Mile Hole. Maybe there's one that's nine miles. Or nine holes. Nine. You know? Are you guys all thinking it's all just right in your face, like he's talking about Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. He's talking about Nine Mile Hole, a fishing hole where Fenn used to visit all the time. And they got pictures of Forrest Fenn's dad at Fenn Rock, which is right next to Nine Mile Hole. And I mean, you guys think it's going to be that obvious? There was some place right there that Fenn and his dad loved to fish all the time. Oh, you guys are really stupid. You're not using your imagination. Not Wyoming's not. They're not talking about the state of Wyoming. Anyway, I'm not picking on you as bad five leaf because uh, you're just saying that's why. That's why I'm trying to be somewhat serious with you. It's kind of like I'm trying to say to a uh, gaslighting force. And uh, it was the. It was just the emails that did it, folks. That's why I think it's at Nine Mile Hole, and that's why I think Fen. I mean, Stu found it there, and I think Fen had left it there. And, Think it was the emails that were entered into evidence in a court trial. Talk about evidence. Talk about evidence for you guys to latch on to to finally end this thing in your brain, the chase. It was in the friggin' court, for God's sakes, as evidence. And the guy who found the chest says, that's where I was looking. But don't believe it. Don't believe it. Folks, that's all I got for you. Hope you, I mean, I hopefully everyone understands now why I did it. Why did I think it was a nine mile hole and why did I try to link it to the poem? That's why I thought it because of those emails, those darn emails that Jack Stoop sent to Forrest Then That's what it was. Everybody have a good day, by the way. Okay, I gotta get this done real quick. By the way, I am set up to go up. Uh, on a three-day treasure, uh, no, not a three-day treasure hunt, a three-day metal hunt down near Walterboro, South Carolina, which is fairly close to Charleston. I'll be videotaping it, videotaping it. I'll be vidding it. I'm just called vidding. I'm going to be vidding it, show you what it's like to go uh, to a place where a club has uh, gotten permission for us. You know, the big problem with metal detecting is finding an area to go metal detect at because both public places and a lot of private places, they don't want you metal detecting. And so they were able to uh, buy us uh, three days on this 2,500 acre place that I guess has a lot of uh, old structures, uh, you know, long, had structures and old buildings. Of course, South Carolina, you get a lot of uh, old buildings uh, from centuries past. So it's going to be three days, and I'll show you what it's like to be there. And um, it's going to, so far, there's 73 people hooked up 
to be at that. Uh, supposedly a lot of veteran metal detection people, and I'm going to be there. You know, I'm still kind of learning mine. i got to get it out and learn it. So i got an Equinox 800, which is a ni nice one, but I haven't really been out and learned how to use it very well. So, so I'm going to, you know, I go, I'm going to show up, and I don't want to be too much of a newbie, but I will be um, a newbie. And what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, and... Um, I'm going to be out near uh, Charleston, and I'm going to spend a couple of days in the area where um, I'm going to try to move. And I'll show you, uh, I'm going to go out and look at some of the areas where I'm going to be metal detecting for pirate's gold and stuff in the future after I move. So that'll be cool. So I'm going to be gone to uh, Charleston area. Uh, and uh, there will be someone staying here at my condo in the time, all that time. So, yeah. Um, that's all I got for you, folks. That's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad I got this off my chest. I feel better. Whew. Thank you to Gaslighting Forest Fan. You, you're able to kind of let me purge myself and explain my last video better, which I understand for some people I did not explain it in as much detail as I needed for them to understand what I was saying. Everybody have a good time and uh, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.